Under the spell of the global economic slowdown from major economies looming over the rest of the world, Asian economies have been surprisingly resilient. Although trade to and from the European Union as well as China have significantly stagnated, Asian economies are still standing on its own domestic consumption. Asian economist Su Xian Lim from HSBC talks about the bank's findings for the second half of 2012, highlighting the internal trade between Asian countries and their domestic demand being a major pillar to the sustained regional economic accomplishments under the looming global economic slowdown. Well, good evening, Ms. Su Xian Lim. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us today in Tours 2015. So first, can you just brief us about the second half findings HSBC has to present today? Um, I think in a nutshell, uh, what we're looking at for the second half is um, a uh, still quite a robust uh, domestic demand picture mm -hmm. uh, for Asia as a whole, uh, but this will be somewhat offset uh, by, by drag uh, from the uh, export sector. Um, so if, if, if you look at ASEAN growth, uh, if you take Thailand out of it, because Thailand is a bit of an anomaly with a very sharp pickup this year and very low growth yes. last year. If you take Thailand out of the e equation, then on average, um, you know, the growth in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, um, uh, Vietnam and Philippines, these five countries should see growth this year of about 4.4% mm -hmm. on average um, and that's a uh, slowdown from 5.3% last year. So I would say yes, you know, that there's a slowdown going on and mm -hmm. I think it's quite apparent uh, but it's uh, not anything sharp. Are Asian economies more resilient to the global slowdown? Um, we are seeing some signs of that, uh, in particular, uh, as I, I mentioned to you before, uh, we are seeing that domestic demand uh, has, has been uh, surprisingly robust, I think, on the consumption side. Consumers are still spending, and that factor has contributed much to help the slowdown in exports. But is the demand and trade within Asian alone enough to withstand staggering figures from major economies? Things, uh, it's been very much supported by the fact that unemployment rates are still very low. Uh, so labour markets are very tight, which means that wages uh, are, are still quite high and um, consumers are able to spend more. Um, they can also feel quite confident about the, um, the outlook because inflation has been very low and stable in the last few months yes. in the region. Um, and I think overlaying everything, um, you know, this is a benefit not just to the household sector but also the business sector is the fact that um, interest rates uh, across the region are also very low. Um, so that enables um, a, a lot of um, uh, borrowing to go on uh, and this then translates into very strong investment and consumer spending. Do you see a significant difference from the demand about 10 years ago maybe in the region? Um, yes, I, I would say, you know, 10, 20 years ago, uh, the, the growth model out here was, uh, you know, grow via exports. And I think one of the biggest lessons that we've all learned from the Lehman crisis uh, of uh, 2008 is that it is uh, not a good thing to be purely export driven. Uh, you have to um, give some uh, scope in terms of government policy into encouraging um, greater uh, consumption growth, greater investment growth. So how would you uh, advise Asian economies to buffer themselves up for the impact that might come from further slowdown in the Eurozone as well as a slowing export sector in China? Um, I think uh, I'm, I'm not well placed to give advice and I, I, I think what policy makers have done so far uh, has uh, by and large uh, I would consider uh, as, as a very good job. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, we, we have seen central banks uh, come in um, to provide uh, additional monetary policy easing. Of course that is uh, constrained to a degree by the fact that interest rates are already so low so there's only so much central banks can cut. Uh, but I think the government has uh, 
uh, picked up a, a significant amount of, of slack as well. Uh, we have seen uh, a lot of fiscal stimulus uh, being rolled out in the region. Um, and this is productive spending. Uh, by and large, it's productive spending. It is going into you know, long-term infrastructure projects, you know, for example, ports and highways and roads yes. um, that will um, uh, be productive you know, uh, and add to, to GDP. Uh, for years to come. Mm, I see. Yeah. So, what, what, just what are about the GDP? Uh, is it going to be affected much by the global slowdown? Uh, yes, I, I think at the end of the day, a, a, a slowing scenario is inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think that the, the main question is how, how deep is the slowdown going to be? Now, if you, if you look across the region, uh, probably with the exception of Singapore, uh, within ASEAN, hardly anyone is talking about recession. Um, so we are more looking at a scenario of uh, moderation uh, rather than, than a sharp slowdown in growth. The headwinds, as I said, uh, come primarily from uh, external conditions mm -hmm. and those are beyond the control of, of policy makers. I see. And, um, well, the, actually there's this a bit of a threat or a risk that Thailand might face a slowdown in the GDP to, due to the shocks from exports to the Eurozone as well as China. Do you think ASEAN right now is interdependent enough uh, from the shocks of the Eurozone? Um, for sh I think uh, it's quite clear that the ASEAN interlinkages have uh, increased in the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I, I don't think we are uh, currently at the stage where, uh, you know, exports to ASEAN are strong enough to offset, let's say, a contraction uh, in demand from Europe and a contraction in demand from Japan, uh, from China, sorry. Um, but it, the, the fact that there's been increased ASEAN integration uh, does provide some buffer against the slowdown in, in Europe and against the slowdown in, in, in China. In the next break, we'll be back to talk with Su Xin Lim on the imminently possible third round of quantitative easing, as well as the ongoing sovereign debt crisis in the Eurozone, and what can ASEAN learn from this case study.